Bergen is the main city along the western shores of Norway. It's in a region famous for its mountain scenery and fjords and great history. You'll find that Bergen is a great place to visit. We'll be devoting the entire program to showing you all around this marvelous city from top to bottom. Starting a quick preview at the outdoor fish market, dominated by makeshift souvenir shops and seafood stalls. It's a fine place to eat, but you'll find better restaurants in the heart of town. Every other building along the waterfront offers some place to eat. A brief orientation talk is helpful before heading out to see the town. We're going to take a two-hour walk to show you several different parts of Bergen. There's the downtown, let's say the, the modern downtown where we're at now, with the pedestrian mall, and there's some parks. There are several museums to consider for this afternoon on your own. Uh, there's art museum, and the university runs a history museum with uh, ethnographic collections of artifacts and Vikings and other memorabilia of the ancient days in the newer part of downtown. And we'll start out taking a walk over to the park and I'll show you that. There's the tram if you wanted just for fun to ride the new tram. Uh, that, that would cost you uh, a few dollars. We'll go on the hillside tram. It's a funicular that goes up to the lookout point. It's about a thousand foot elevation. And from there we'll have a nice view looking down at Bergen at the central harbor of Bergen. I'll be shooting video all along the way, so you gotta have your cameras out and on, turned on, snap, 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 and be shooting, right? There's a lot of things to see. It's a, it's a beautiful town. Bergen was the capital of Norway for a while back in the early 1700s, and it was the largest city in Norway until about 1820, when Oslo gained its population. And I'll talk a little more about the history, of course, when we get over into the historic district and the wonderful old wooden buildings that date back to 1702, and they're part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Along with the famous old wooden historic buildings, there are a number of other attractions in Bergen and the surrounding areas, including the modern downtown. Most tourists find the general ambience and cultural landscape and street life to be just as interesting as the official tourist attractions like museums. Be sure to spend time strolling around the city and relaxing at a park or a cafe, and maybe enjoying a street performer. The big pedestrian mall is a popular gathering spot with lots of benches and seats around. This modern side of town is really quite attractive and we'll show you more of it later in the program. Unfortunately, a lot of visitors never bother to come over here. They just look at the old historic buildings. There are many nice hotels on this side, and if you're staying there, be sure to have a look around. It's just a few minutes walk from the harbor. This is the fish market, and it's really become a very touristic spot, but they still have some fresh fish. There's restaurants uh, in the middle that are really quite popular. One of them is a pizzeria in the middle of the fish market. Pepe's Pizzeria <laughs> on the other side. There's souvenirs for sale here. And also, I want to point out to you where we're going, up there. You see on the hilltop, uh, that's the funicular. We're not walking up, we're gonna <laughs> we'll ride the train up. And first, we're going to see the Brigand, which is the old wooden buildings on the other side of the harbor. So we'll s slowly meander through here. So this fish market is a must. You have to come through the fish market right in the center of town. It's fun. And then it's really scenic with the harbor and the boats right here. This is a beautiful spot. The fish market has a long history as center for fish trade, but of course oh, yeah. the fish market today does not compare to what it once was. For most of its history, fishing was Bergen's only important economic activity, with fishermen delivering their catch right here. But now the market is just for tourists. You certainly could have a decent meal here. You can get fresh fish for uh, under 20 euro for lunch. And it's a nice outdoor ambience, so go right ahead, help yourself. Try something unusual. A few blocks beyond the market, you'll find the main historic buildings, the big attraction. It's a cluster of well-preserved wooden structures called the Brigham. It's right along the waterfront of the Inner Harbor, so take advantage of this promenade and have a stroll. Brigham. That's the uh, famous, world-famous site that you're looking at now. 
this row of wooden buildings. Uh, it dates from 1702. Now, there were buildings similar to this much earlier, but there was a great fire. In 1702, they all burned down. So this is what we uh, have now is the, the later manifestation. They were really trading here from about the year 1200. The Hanseatic League was established and that was the trading network of Northern Europe, primarily run by Germans. There is an excellent history museum located in several original wooden buildings that were offices and homes of the Hanseatic traders. Guides bring you through actual authentic rooms and explain about life centuries ago and show you lots of period piece furniture and artifacts, making this a very worthwhile visit. We've got a separate, more detailed movie about this tour in our collection. The Hanseatic League was a major commercial network controlling northern European maritime trade between the years 1350 and 1750. There were four principal ports and then many other minor ports throughout northern Europe. Bergen was one of those four principal ports, along with London and Bruges and a few other places up in the Scandinavia area. So uh, Bergen became extremely important from 1300. Trading center, and it, it functioned in a couple of ways. It was producing its own goods, particularly the dried cod, great fishing grounds out in the North Atlantic. So uh, tremendous amounts of dried cod. And of course that food could be preserved for years. You could still eat some of that stuff from 300 years ago. <laughs> and also timber. So those were the local goods. But even more importantly, Bergen was a transshipment harbor. So the goods were coming in from the east, they were coming in from the west, and crossing paths here. So you have these middlemen. These were warehouses for all of those kinds of goods. The textiles, steel, there were spices coming in, there were ceramics from Syria, there was even some goods from as far away as China. And the trade was in, like I say, both directions. So the merchants here were taking a cut of the action. And that went on to th right through uh, the early 1800s. Very important trading center. And then the capital moved to Oslo. And the population center moved over to Oslo. But as we know, Bergen is still the second biggest city in Norway. The, the metropolitan population is about 300,000 in the greater total area here. And it's not as uh, densely concentrated in downtown apartments. You see all those houses up on the hill. And as we came in, we saw a lot of houses along the bay. So it's really a lovely place, a beautiful lifestyle here. The Bergen is the most famous stretch of buildings in Norway. Well, this is a busy spot right in the heart of Bergen, facing the harbor. And it's so picturesque, you gotta come down here. And if you wanna see it a little bit more quiet, you come in the evening. 8 p.m., 9 or 10, and just come in and have a drink. They were warehouses primarily, but also they were living houses, and they were some retail shops even back in the 1700s, and I'm sure they had their, their bars back then and their eateries back then. So this was really the main part of town, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, beautifully preserved, wooden structures. The Brigham today is all tourist shops and bars and restaurants and just some empty old buildings. And there are several alleyways that come into it. And that's what we're gonna do is take uh, one of those alleyways just ahead and walk along through the courtyard uh, to the back courtyard. And then we're gonna go out the back of Brigham. And I wanna show you the residential neighborhood that's just across the street and, and goes up the hill. We're only going to walk a block into that area, but uh, to show you, maybe you want to explore it later on your own. You'll see it's a very cozy, quiet little neighborhood of pedestrian lanes. Old wooden houses that also date back to the 1700s, 1800s. I walked through there last evening and it was so quiet. It's fully occupied with residences. And of course there was people here for thousands of years before that, obviously, you know, just simple fisher folks. And, there was a Viking presence throughout Scandinavia, and that was a, early on. That was, in fact, uh, about 1200 was the peak of the Viking era. This village was established just as the Vikings were phasing out. So it wasn't really a Viking center, but there was a little bit of an overlap in the chronologies. 1200, 1220, 1240. 
ending of the Viking period and the beginnings of settlement here in Bergen. And then, as I say, that trade uh, network built up in the 1200s, 1400s, right on through to the early 1800s. They, they were pretty nasty creatures, they were. They, they would raid, like in England, uh, the Danish Vikings came over to England and they attacked the churches. The churches were the repositories of the wealth in England. Uh, they, they were where they kept all the money and the gold and the Vikings stole it all. Those Vikings, they went all the way down with their boats uh, into Paris, they went down throughout Europe, they went into the Mediterranean. There's a, a positive side to the Viking conquests as well. They brought some kind of civilization to those areas as well. They had their own Viking laws, their rules, their uh, very sophisticated farming techniques and fishing and navigation, uh, nautical techniques, sophisticated tools, metalworks. So the Vikings did enhance uh, the cultures in some ways like that. You know, interchange of cultures, anytime you have an interchange of ideas, it, it's going to have some positive effect. The Brigand has several of these old alleyways that take you right through the middle of the buildings into some courtyards in the back. And there's some shops along the alleys and cafes. You'll find a bakery, a good place to sit and have a coffee, maybe in a cinnamon bun, or come back in the evening. You can have dinner at the Brigand in various restaurants, or just simply sit and have a drink and enjoy the view. But again, it's more than just a row of wooden facades. It's an entire historic neighborhood connected by narrow alleyways with many restaurants and a surprising variety of quality shops. This area was the main residences, offices, shops, and warehouses of this thriving town for nearly seven centuries. Nobody lives here in Brigham anymore, but it's still a very lively spot. There are artists in their studios, the shops, the ice cream, the fast food, and a few very nice restaurants. At least 16 major fires have burned this section repeatedly to the ground, only to be rebuilt again, starting as far back as the year 1198 and continuing right up through 1955. Most of the buildings we see today were constructed just after the worst fire, which happened in 1702, when 90% of the city was burned to ashes. That fresh start 300 years ago is the reason we now have such a similar harmonious style and excellent preservation. Here's another travel tip for you when you're visiting the Brigand. Be sure to walk up around behind the wooden complex to the street where you'll get a wonderful view looking back down at it. And this makes a great photo op you don't see many tourists up here. They just don't realize that the back also is nearly as interesting as the front. And then you walk right across the street to the old residential neighborhood. We're going to walk just one little block through this little park across the street. That's the residential. And you'll get a good taste for it in that one short block. From down here, you might get a little more open shot. I love this neighborhood. It goes for about 10 blocks and it goes higher and higher gets steep. <laughs> I'm just taking you up this path here. This is nothing. This is very easy. We're just going for one block, a little loop, and then back down to the main road. And then over to our funicular, it'll take us up the hill. This neighborhood has got a lot of cozy charm to it. It's a largely a pedestrian kind of neighborhood. And this is a very historic part of town. This was the earliest of the, uh, the buildings that we see. The oldest occupied buildings are all on this lower hillside, dating to the 1700s and 1800s. Of course, some of them would be a little bit later than that. And there's even a few uh, more modern apartment buildings around too. But a real quiet neighborhood. Just listen, nice place to live. And so close to downtown. And then, of course, you know, the hillside is covered with houses all the way up. You've seen that from down in the central city. So if you're game this afternoon on your free time, I suggest you come back here. There's not much in the way of shops. There might be an odd boutique here or there, but it's residential. And it does get really quite steep. But the road just continues along here. And then there's one more road up behind this one with a similar uh, historic charm. 
Well, there you see more of the neighborhood and the upper street. It gets pretty steep if you go up there to the right. One of the big highlights of Bergen is the trip up Floyen Mountain for a panorama view. It's easy to get there because there's a funicular which takes you. And the entrance is right in this residential part of town. After paying your modest fee, enter the boarding area and board the train. There are several short tunnels and three little stops this funicular can make along the way because local residents use it more or less as an elevator, as a kind of shuttle tram to get from their home down into the town. It's operated automatically, stopping by itself at the stations, but there's a conductor engineer on board to make sure everything is working properly. The ride takes just eight minutes, making this a very easy excursion. At the top, you get a wonderful view of the town and harbor from a thousand foot high observation perch. One of the things you really have to do when you come to Bergen is go up on the hill for this superb view, looking back down at the city. And when you're up here, there's a variety of different kinds of trails that you can walk on as well. We're up on a mountain plateau up at Floyen. You take the Floybon funicular to get up here and you might have to wait on a little line down at the bottom, but the line moves quickly, so it's certainly worth it, worth your time. And you can look right down into the main harbor, the Wagen uh, Bergen, and you can pick out all of the various landmarks of the city. You can see the big pond and park in the middle of town and the old buildings of the Brigham. Back in the Middle Ages, Bergen was an extremely important trading center in Northern Europe starting from as early as 1200. The village was established by about the year 1000, and Bergen was one of the principal trading towns of that northern Europe. It's a small city, population under 300,000 people, and the center is very compact, so it's easy to walk around. And you have your various different sites, and this hillside, it's a great view. Nearly one and a half million people annually make this trip, including my small group from Hawaii. And it's become the attraction that gets the highest visitor satisfaction. It's open daily, train running generally from 8 a.m. until 11 p.m. After enjoying the wonderful vista and snapping all your photos, you might consider walking down the attractive path through the woods for a nature hike that provides beautiful scenery along with some exercise. And it's easy walking downhill. It's almost like you're floating along through the forest. But you see, we took the lazy route, riding back down. While in this part of town, it's worth exploring and browsing around through these quiet residential streets and alleyways, which are not even mentioned in typical guidebooks. We're going off the grid to a more authentic experience. This neighborhood is just five blocks away from the downtown streets, busy with buses, cars, stores, and outdoor markets. But here in this residential quarter, there is an entirely different atmosphere of a quiet, peaceful calm. There are a few little gardens and immaculate houses with little alleys you can walk through. Very charming and picturesque. It's a neighborhood for local residents. You'll find the occasional shop and restaurant in the middle of this district as well. It's a charming spot that's been beautifully preserved and you'll see very few cars in these narrow lanes. Some years ago, Bergen was chosen as one of Europe's three tidiest cities. Bergeners are busily engaged in keeping it so by taking care of their lovely old city, famous for its unique historic wooden house architecture. Bergen Cathedral, the Domkirke, is part of the Church of Norway, a Lutheran congregation. The church was first mentioned in the year 1181, but the present structure took shape in the early 17th century. The neighborhood is really an example of what modern urban planners consider a ideal mix of residential and retail. It's a real human scale here, and things are in walking distance. You can get to the fish market in five blocks or over to the Brigham in five blocks. Everything is very convenient. You can even find a cheap hotel if you don't mind staying at the YMCA Youth Hostel. Norway is expensive, so there's a good place to save a little money.
The neighborhood is adjacent to the busier parts of the commercial center of Bergen. So walk on down the hill. You can cross over passing the fish market into downtown. And now we're going to take you on a tram ride. Bergen has a new light rail system. It's a street level tram that opened in 2010 and it operates on an exclusive right of way. It's a very new and comfortable system and you buy your ticket at a machine. You can ask for English and you, you're gonna hit the touch screen, adult ticket. Today the ticket is 27 kroner, which is about four and a half dollars. And you just put your money in and you can also pay with a credit card. You want to have a ticket because otherwise you'll get a fine. It's an honor system in riding this. And if you don't have a ticket, you'll get a big fat fine and get kicked off the train. The system is not very useful for tourists, however. This is for local people. It comes out into the suburbs. Kind of low density, medium density suburbs, mix of houses and garden apartments and townhouses out here. It shows how versatile a uh, tram system can be. It has a couple of short subway tunnels, but for the most part it operates at grade. It's very ecological. They have a lot of green lawns growing between the tracks. The ticket must be validated when you enter by holding it close to the electronic card reader until you get a green light. Tickets bought from machines are valid for 90 minutes during which you can travel freely and transfer within the area covered by your fare. It figures that in high-tech Norway, there's a cell phone app that allows you to buy single tickets or a 24-hour ticket or a seven-day ticket with your cell phone by credit card, and then you wave your phone at the machine on boarding. The tram goes all the way to the airport as of spring 2017 a distance of just 20 kilometers or about 12 miles so it takes about a half an hour to get there. Bergen is one of the smallest cities in Europe to have both tram and trolleybus electric urban transport systems simultaneously. Even though it's a relatively new system it needs constant maintenance and they do it in a very high-tech style. Well, we're back in downtown already. That was just a quick round trip to give us an idea of what the tram ride is like. It was kind of fun. Passing the pretty park in the heart of downtown and getting off at the terminus of the system. And here you've also got a bus stop interchange. It's a very sophisticated multimodal transit system. There are many more fine sights that will keep you busy and entertained as we see in these glimpses of the modern downtown. You want to make time to enjoy the downtown square at the heart of the city, just a few blocks from the harbor on the modern side. There's extensive parklands as well as that nice large park in the middle of town, the Nigards Parkin, and that's open all the time. Within the city center, walking is always the best way to get around. It's just 20 minutes to cross downtown on foot in any direction. And the center of town is rather level, but as we've seen, the edge is steeper. They say Bergen is the most hilly and mountainous major town in Norway. This is a cultural part of town with Bergen's main theater, the National Scene. It was founded in 1850 and Henrik Ibsen was one of its first in-house playwrights. The theater presents a variety of plays on three different stages in Norwegian. Facing it is a statue of Ole Bull. He and Edvard Grieg are the two most renowned classical music composers from Bergen. Locals love to come out here on a sunny summer afternoon and picnic or just sunbathe, relax on the grass. They have a long, dark winter and it's cold, and so during the summer, the days seem to go on forever. And this park in the middle of town is a nice place to enjoy it from. When planning a visit here, you want to consider the weather. Bergen, unfortunately, is well known for having a lot of rain.
an average of 240 days a year with precipitation totaling 89 inches. An extreme example happened at the end of 2006 when it rained for 85 consecutive days. The best time to catch good weather is May, which has the least rain, and June through August are also good choices, and it's usually no warmer than the low 80s, very comfortable. That covers our in-depth look at Bergen. We do have two other movies about this wonderful place. We show you how we traveled to Bergen from Oslo on a scenic journey by train, across the snow-capped mountains, and then by boat through Norway's longest fjord, and we have a movie about the Hanseatic Museum here in Bergen that shows you life of the fish merchants in Bergen centuries ago. The museum's inside the historic Bergen in an authentic wooden structure that was actually used by those merchants with period furniture and various artifacts depicting their life. Look for that in our collection where we also have many other movies about Scandinavia.